Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our college visit series. We are very excited to have Washington College with us here today. And Kelly Vallette is going to be sharing some information with us about their wonderful programs and everything that they have to offer. So go ahead and let her take over. Great, thank you. Um, yes, hi everyone, my name is Kelly Vallette. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Washington College. I also attended Washington College, so if you're curious about my experience, feel free, check out our website, look up my email, send me any questions you have. Um, I currently work with families coming from all of Virginia, so I would be your admissions counselor, as well as a few counties in Maryland. Um, so once you submit your application to Washington College, I will be the first one reading it. So don't hold back any questions or concerns you guys have. I'm happy to answer them. I'm also originally from Northern Virginia. I went to school in Fairfax County, so definitely familiar with the whole state. Um, my parents live in down in Southern Virginia, so I've been all over. Um, so any questions or concerns you guys have, don't hesitate to reach out. Now, Washington College is located in Maryland. We're a small private liberal arts school. Um, we're located right across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. So from where you guys are in kind of the Richmond area, we're about a three hour drive. Not too bad. Um, once you get over the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, we're only about a 40 minute drive away. Um, we are located somewhat on a waterfront campus. So we are located on the Chester River. Our waterfront campus has our boathouse for rowing and sailing teams, as well as it's Wi-Fi capable. So students are able to go down there, you know, kind of hang out, relax a little bit, do some homework. And then adjacent to our boathouse, we do have our brand new environmental science academic building. That's a completely living building, so it produces more energy than it uses on a daily basis. The entire roofing um, area is um, com completely covered with solar panels, and the majority of that space in the building is used for wet labs. So there are some classrooms in there, but the majority of it is used for that lab space. So our students are able to take out the boats that we have docked right there at the waterfront, conduct any research they need to on either the Chesapeake Bay or Chester River and bring it right back into that lab space and start analyzing that data one on one with their professors. Now, like I said, we are located on the eastern shore of Maryland. Um, we are a little bit more on that rural side of Maryland, um, but one of the benefits to that is because of where we are located in Maryland is we're surrounded by three major cities for you to explore, of course, for recreational use or more importantly for job shadowing and internship opportunities. Even New York City is within a three hour drive from us. So that really kind of triples that opportunity for you to explore you know, a little bit outside of our campus and look into those higher level internship opportunities. Communities. Now, as far as Chestertown goes, I'll kind of talk about that here in a few minutes, but it's kind of that small mom and pop town, the way I describe it. Um, we're very close with the town. It's less than a two minute drive from our main campus. If you want to walk from campus to downtown or down to the waterfront, it's about a 10 to 15 minute walk. Um, now, kind of thinking about our academic layout, like I said, we do fall under that liberal arts curriculum. So what that means is coming in as a first year student, you will not just be taking, say you're interested in studying English, you won't just be taking those English classes for four years. What your course load would look like your first two years is kind of taking all of those general education requirement classes you need to graduate from Washington College. So what that would be is a math and science class, you know, a fine arts requirement, a language requirement, some classes in the humanities. So you'd be able to kind of get a little bit of experience in all of the programming that we offer, whether you know what you want to study or whether you're undecided. That gives you a really good opportunity to kind of get to know all the different majors and programs we have and then, you know, kind of make your decision from there. We also do not require you declare your major till end of sophomore year. So even if you're undecided right now and you come to our campus, you still have two full years to figure out what you want to study. If you can't make a decision, about 50% of our students do double major. So we're even able to combine a lot of those kind of, um, you know, STEM versus humanities programs, if that's something you're interested in. Because we fall under that liberal arts curriculum, a lot of those, you know, general requirements that are going to fall under all of our majors are able to cross cancel each other. So for example, if you want to study biology and history or, you know, chemistry and theater, you can do that. Um, we're able to combine a little bit more of those bigger programs together. Now, some of our most popular majors and programs, business management has always been very big for us, as well as environmental science and studies is huge. Even though we are a liberal arts school, we're very strong in the STEM-based areas. Political science is also very popular because of our relationship and proximity to Washington, D.C. A lot of high-level internship opportunities there. English, we've always been known for since our opening. Washington College is known as a writer's college. 
don't worry right now if you're not the strongest writer. That's just our goal once you graduate. No matter what major you end up pursuing, you will graduate a proficient writer. And by no means does that mean you're going to be writing endless amounts of essays in your classes. That just means we're going to incorporate those different skills into all of your classes. So being able to clearly communicate your findings, you know, your opinions, whether it's orally or written, is going to get you a lot further in, um, compared to some of your peers when you're going through maybe that job application process or grad school applications. Also, our pre-health professions programs are very popular. We do have a couple three, two partnership programs. For example, we have a partnership with Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, if that's something you're interested in. We did add two new teaching certifications this year as well. We are currently the only school in Maryland to offer a teaching certification in both computer science and environmental science. So if you're thinking about majoring in one of those, maybe consider adding on that teaching certification for an option down the road. And then moving to the right, as you can see, we have many minors, concentrations, areas of emphasis. So this really kind of opens up that opportunity if you have a really specific passion or something you're really interested in diving in and learning more about, you can add on almost any of these minors or concentrations onto any of the majors that you might choose. Um, so this is a way for our students really to kind of, you know, create their own education throughout their four years. And moving on, just kind of wanted to highlight a couple other unique aspects of Washington College. Like I said, we are known as a writer's college. So we're actually known for offering the largest undergraduate literary prize in the nation. So this is called the Sophie Kerr Prize, which you'll hear me say a lot of these different opportunities on our campus aren't just closed off to one certain group of students or a certain major. So typically this is, you know, opened up for students to have any passion or any just really strong skill in writing. Typically, we have about five finalists per year. We've had biology students submit lab reports. We've had theater students submit scripts for plays they've written. And then one senior the night before graduation is awarded up to $63,000, which I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a pretty good graduation gift to start out with. Um, so again, you know, that's unrestricted for them to use towards graduate school or any literary endeavors they might want to pursue down the road. Kind of going inside the classroom, um, our average class size is about 12 to 13 students. So if you're looking for a school where you're really going to be known as, you know, your first name and not a number, your faculty is going to know, you know, what you're involved in outside the classroom. They're going to know where you're from. They're going to know your pet's name at home. Um, you know, they're really going to be there to help you succeed, not only in their classroom, but also just throughout your education and, you know, your academic and extracurricular experience throughout your four years. Um, we really kind of, you know, describe not only our fellow peers as faculty, but also our faculty as family, right? You know, they're not just there to see you in and out their classroom every day. They're there for office hours, before, after class, evenings, you know, on the weekends. Um, they're there if you need a recommendation letter for grad school or a job interview or uh, internship opportunity. They're the ones going to be able to write it for you. And it's going to be a little bit more of that personal touch because it's that small classroom experience. They're going to know your strengths and they can kind of really talk towards that as well. Now, a lot of our courses that we offer, you know, some of them you can't get away from that lecture style based um, teaching. However, the majority of the classes you would take are discussion based. This is something I really valued about my education here is I wasn't just sitting in a classroom 24 seven mindlessly taking notes. We were actively engaged in the material. We were debating in class, discussing with our peers, one on one with the faculty members, being able to really kind of understand putting yourself in someone else's shoes and understanding, you know, their background, where they're coming from and why they think that way. That was something that I really valued from a lot of the classes that I took here. Now, moving outside the classroom, something that Washington College really kind of focuses on is getting you outside the classroom and getting you that hands on experience. If you're thinking down the road, job applications or even grad school applications, a lot of employers, you know, they're going to say, hey, you know, it's great you took that accounting and finance course, but can you actually implement it in the real world? Have you had that experience? So we really try to get our students out the beginning of sophomore year, at least job shadowing, if not getting that internship opportunity. About 65% of our students will complete at least one or more internships throughout their four years. So you'll start working with our career development office your first year on campus, start working with a counselor, you'll get that rough resume and cover letter written, you'll attend workshops on resume building, building, how to build a LinkedIn profile, how to answer difficult interview questions, 
And then we also offer career fairs each semester. We will be able to meet not only local companies, but also those bigger companies in those three major cities surrounding us. Stanley Black & Decker, which is based in Baltimore, they come over to campus and virtually a lot um, to help our students out with mock interviews, for example. Um, so we're able to provide you know, a lot of that experience ahead of time before you get out to that internship, but before you start applying to jobs your senior year. We wanna make sure that you're comfortable and you know, qualified even on paper to kind of jump start that coming into your senior year. Now thinking about the environment around us, like I said, environmental science and studies is one of our top five majors here. The reason why is because we have a lot of opportunities located right there in the Kent County area for our students to explore and do research on. We have an over 5,000 acre river and field campus, 10 minutes away, which encompasses grassland, wetland, a bird banding station, and observatory for students to use for their own research. We also do offer something called the Chesapeake semester. Now this is a 16 credit course offered to any student, no matter what their major is. Typically the first half of the semester, they'll take trips out to the Chester River, Chesapeake Bay, different waterways in between. And then the second half of the semester, outside of COVID years, typically they take a trip to Belize and they'll compare the two watersheds. No matter what your major is at the end of the semester, you'll get a, con uh, a concentration in Chesapeake Bay area studies attached to your major, which again, thinking down the road, whether you're applying to jobs or grad schools, that's going to be something really un unique to kind of pull out of your pocket and use to your, for, your, uh, for your benefit. Now, again, because of our proximity to Washington, D.C., that brings in a lot of students here wanting to study political science, international studies relations, maybe adding on a minor in justice, law and society. So we do have some pretty high level internship opportunities because of the relationships that our board members have here with, for example, the Smithsonian Museums in D.C. So we have an internship program over the summer called Explore America, which brings a group of students down to D.C. And we've had students go behind the scenes in the National Archives building using those documents for their own research as well. Um, so again, really focusing on getting our students, of course, that you know, hands-on learning opportunity in the classroom, but more importantly, outside the classroom and implementing it into the real world. And of course, student life, you know, you're coming to college to study, but you have to have some fun. You have to relax a little bit. Um, so we do have a very active student body. We have over 80 clubs and organizations that you can join. We have service-based clubs and organizations, um, interest-based, Greek life. About 25% of our students are involved in Greek life. If you don't see a club that isn't of interest to you, it's super easy to make your own club, which is why we have so many. Um, you need 10 other friends, find a faculty advisor, and you're good to go. Some of our most popular clubs recently has been our eSports club, as well as Relay for Life, Habitat for Humanity, Student Government is also very big. You can get a leadership role as soon as your freshman year and that you can be a senator for your dorm, uh, your dorm room, if that's something you're looking for. Now, as far as kind of events that go on throughout the week, our student events board are the uh, group who plans that for our students. We do bingo night, you know, uh, trivia nights where you can win gift cards to places in town, different, you know, kind of cultural events around the campus as well that are open to all students. And we do have a lot of fun traditions on our campus. I'm going to tell you about one here, but if you're interested about hearing about more, definitely message one of our current students, which you can find on our website, and they'll be happy to tell you about many more of our traditions. But one of our um, um, kind of bigger traditions coming into the beginning of the year is our cardboard boat race. Typically this happens during the end of September during fall family weekend and it's just that. It's where students will get together, build the best boat they can out of cardboard and race it around a little course that we have right there in the Chester River. Now we give out awards for all different things, you know, first to make it around the course, best decorated, first to sink, which of course there's a lot of those. Um, so just kind of a really fun event that our students actually get really into. I've seen students start building these boats, you know, end of August when they are coming in for move-in day. Um, so students get pretty excited about this as well. We do have athletics. We are a D3 school, which means you'd be a student athlete. So for example, academics come first. If you have class during practice time, you go to class first, and then catch what you can after practice. Um, if you can't, if you can't make practice due to an academic, you know, commitment, you're not going to be cut from the team. Academics, internships come first. Um, if you're interested if, um, in playing a sport, I am also our athletics liaison, so I'm happy to connect you with any of the coaches that we have. So feel free again, send me an email. I'm happy to make that connection for you.
Moving forward, just wanted to highlight a couple of those internship and out of the classroom experiences. The top left hand corner is a photo of Chesapeake semester. So as you can see, students are doing that research one on one right out there on the Chester River on one of the boats that we have. On the top right hand corner, that's a picture of that bird banding station that I mentioned that's over on that river and field campus. So our students are able to work one on one with faculty right there. Um, one of the most recent internships that one of our students have been able to get is with the National Park Service this past summer. So very socially distant there, which was nice. Um, and this is something she'd been wanting since she was a little girl. So she was very excited to be able to get this opportunity. All right, so moving forward again, kind of wanted to talk about Chestertown a little bit, but real quick, kind of give you an idea of what campus looks like. So on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, this is an aerial view of campus. On the bottom right hand corner of that photo, if you can see my cursor, this is a picture of all of our first year housing. So coming in as a first year student, you will have that traditional one roommate. Um, so that'll be a double room. And then after your first year, if you see behind the baseball fields, this is all of our upperclassmen housing. And this can be suites of four people or seven people, depending on what you want to do. Now, outside of COVID, um, we are a four-year residential school. So our students live on campus all four years, housing's guaranteed all four years. We do have a very small percentage who live off campus for various reasons. If there's veterans, you know, non-traditional students coming back to take classes, local students who live right in the Kent County area, they'll go ahead and, you know, commute in. But the rest of our students, at least 90% live on campus all four years. Now again, moving into Chestertown, like I said, less than a two minute drive from the campus you're seeing right there. We have a lot of events that we offer students to get involved in pretty much all throughout the week. Um, so we have a farmer's market every Saturday morning, year round, rain or shine. That's still my favorite thing to go to. I go to it every Saturday. Um, and it brings in a lot of local farmers who bring in produce, local baked goods, which are really, really good. Um, you know, homemade granola, homemade cinnamon buns, pumpkin bread, banana bread, anything you can imagine. Um, so a lot of our students really kind of get involved in that, at least take a walk down the street, you know, go down to Evergreen Bakery and grab a coffee. Um, we also have something called First Friday, which is the first Friday of every month. Downtown stays open later. There's free food on the sidewalks, which as a college student, trust me, you will never pass up free food. Um, so sometimes there's, you know, music on the sidewalks. It's just a really fun time just to kind of walk through town a little bit and get to know the community members. Typically coming into the holidays, they're themed. So usually in December, we do a Dickens themed festival. So the entire main street is shut down. There's bonfires around so you can roast marshmallows. There's caroling going on events down at the waterfront as well that you can attend. Now again, looking at that waterfront, like I said, we do have that boathouse down there that's open to all students. So we have free paddle boards, canoes, and kayaks that you can take out whenever you want as well. All right, and finishing up real quick, just wanted to kind of cover general um, kind of things about the application process, you know, anything about admissions. Um, we do use the common application. We're completely free on the common application, so very easy to apply. We also do have our own institutional application. Does not matter at all, whichever you use. I typically suggest for my students, if you guys are applying to at least, you know, two or three schools or more using the common application, just add us on there. It's going to make your life 10 times easier versus maybe if you only end up to applying to Washington College or maybe two schools, use our own application. It's shorter, so it'll make your life easier on that end and save you time. We are a test optional school. We have been test optional for several years now because of the lack of testing available right now. We have removed that GPA requirement and most likely going forward as well. So there's no um, eligibility requirements to be able to apply test optional. The only thing you'll have to do is fill out kind of an agreement form, which you can find on our website, send it in with your application and you're good to go. Um, you will still be considered for our merit-based scholarships even if you apply test optional. So if you're looking at just test optional schools, take a look at their policy because a lot of them will take you out of the running for those scholarships. So just keep an eye out for that. Now, as far as the three different deadlines, we do offer three really depending on what you're looking for. Um, early decision for us is binding. So that means, you know, at the end of the day, you're ready to apply. Washington College is a school for you. You want to commit. You can afford it 100% financially. When you submit that application, we will have you sign an agreement form saying if you do get accepted with us, you will withdraw any other applications to other schools and you will come to Washington College. Please don't feel pressured at all to apply early decision. There's no extra scholarship consideration or anything for that. Just, you know, there for that small group of students who know, you know, this is a school for me. 
Early action is non-binding, and this is our largest application pool. So this is what I would really stress you guys being my students apply for. Um, if you want to make sure that you're being considered for any and all scholarships you could be, applying before December 1st is going to put you in all those groups. Um, so definitely put whether you're, you know, senior listening to this or junior, put December 1st in your calendar and kind of, you know, go towards that. Again, that's non-binding, um, but you will get pretty much a very early on notification for that as well. And then our last deadline is regular decision, which is also non-binding, and that's February 15th. Now, when you're researching other schools, you might see they have what's called rolling admission, which means they're going to accept your application all the way up until May 1st, which is that National College Decision Day. However, for us, our last deadline is February 15th. So remember Valentine's Day, give yourself 24 hours, you'll be good to go. Um, we do have rolling notification, per se. Um, so what that means is the earlier you get it to us, the earlier we're going to get back to you. We will not wait traditionally until these notification dates to send everything out. We get them out kind of in different rounds as well. So you'll be able to kind of hear back a little bit sooner than maybe other schools. Um, as far as the virtual interview goes, we do offer them. They are not mandatory at all for the application process, but very highly encouraged. Again, since we are a small school, especially within our admissions office, I'm going to spend at least 30 minutes reading your application. So the better I get to know you, the better I'm gonna be able to read your application, the better I'm gonna be able to go to bat for you if your scholarship or if your application goes to a scholarship committee for review. So the more that I can communicate with you before you submit your application, that's only gonna help you out down the road. Um, so again, not mandatory, but highly encouraged. We also do track demonstrated interest. So again, that's gonna be something that's counted towards your application. So signing up for that interview, sending me an email, calling me, setting up a meeting, you know, visiting campus, whether it's in person or virtually, that's all tracked through your application process and that can help you out down the road as well. So don't hesitate to reach out to us, we're here to help. Um, we have a bunch of our uh, student ambassadors on our website that you can talk to. If you're interested in a, in a specific program, choose a tour guide who's in that major, ask them some questions. You know, Don't hesitate to use other different avenues other than myself because you'll probably be sick of listening to me talk. Um, so reach out to our faculty, reach out to our current students, they're here and they're ready to help you. Um, so that's all I have right now. Um, I want to thank you guys for listening and please, you know, look up my information on the website, look for my email, send me any questions or concerns you have. If you want to be connected with a faculty member, I'm happy to make that connection for you as well. So thank you again, and I hopefully look forward to reading your applications soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. This information has been wonderful. We really appreciate it. And we'll post your email address with the video so that our students can reach out to you if they have any questions. Perfect. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have bye a good bye. day. You too.